think I saw it first shortly after it was put in, and uh, it took me a little bit to connect it, to think, well, what is that? What holiday is this? I really had no idea what it meant. I didn't feel it was very attractive. <laughs> Later, I got a phone call from someone who said, did you notice there's a blue line in Warwick, and is that a statement about Black Lives Matter? So it kind of made me wonder. There were lines that were painted in other communities, and we started getting phone calls, of course. Uh, the village board felt that it was an important thing because our police force does a great job, and it was very simple. It's going to, you know, eventually fade. It was just a tip of the hat. I first saw the blue line showing the support on the Internet. And I, and I was touched when I saw it. I didn't expect it. That blue line has been interpreted in different ways by different people. And there are many people, good thinking people, that were outraged. And there are a lot of good thinking people who felt, well, this is a way that we can say thanks to, the, to our active police force. Warwick is this town that wants to be adorable, wants to be this beautiful place that people want to come to. And all of a sudden we've got this ugly line down the middle of the road. The reason that I say that it's clearly a Blue Lives Matter is because of the political context in this country. The fact that the Black Lives Matter movement has been gaining some traction. Why do we need to suddenly stand up and say we support our police? What was the intent of the Blue Line? To show appreciation for law enforcement local law enforcement without any of the other things being dragged in. I don't think they were looking beyond Warwick when they when they did that. And, and why? Why did they have to? Things I never told you want to choke me When give it up, gotta let it go. Warwick is it's mostly white. There's not many times when I see any minorities really around. I personally have had a good and bad experiences with the police. More so when I was a little younger, I experienced a lot more run-ins with the police, getting taken out of the car for no reason. It only has to go badly once. That's what comes to mind when I saw the line, is that I just felt like it was dismissive. This is a problem. Even my friends don't generally talk about issues of race, what they've noticed, what's going on in the country, what's going on around them. Um, I think people are still very uncomfortable about addressing race. This is only a manifestation of something deeper in our psyche around race. And, and it's there whether the blue line surfaced or not. There's a national discussion currently being had about this, and from where we're standing, the blue line takes a side in that argument. I decided to write a petition. Not all of them, but there are police officers doing terrible things, and we can't just stand behind any act committed by any police officer simply because they wear the uniform, and, and that's what I was trying to draw attention to. One of the comments on my petition actually sprung another petition. It was racially charged. That was hard to see. I don't know what will come of that. I think most police officers, the vast majority of them, are trying to do a good job. And we should stand by them and honor them. I don't know if you heard about the petitions that have come out. No. Who put this out? It says, black people are killing each other, so the police have to do it too. That, that makes no sense to me. See, the thing is, I could not support the letter that is for the blue line. There are almost 600 supporters, and that horrifies me. I didn't think there were a net number of people in Warwick who would support a letter like this. People who were energized by the pro-line po protest yeah. um, are going to go to the village hall tomorrow, to the meeting. Oh, boy. <laughs>
This afternoon, we made a determination to take away the blue line and to repaint it the colors of our nation. To change it was to be more inclusive. And, excuse me, if you can't hold your mouth, you can leave. Mr. Mayor, I am ashamed of what you did today. You disrespected the Warwick PD and all of the police officers living here. That wasn't the intent. That was. Excuse me. Don't put words in my mouth. If you don't like it, you can walk out those doors. It can be corrected. It can be corrected. I wrote a letter in opposition to the blue line. All my cousins and uncles are New York City policemen. I am just like you. Not quite. Except I love you. Please, 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 where the blue lives matter is in opposition to black lives matter. You perceive it your way, we perceive it our way. We don't agree. Let's have a let's have a quick dose of truth here. Let's talk truth. Police are being assassinated in this country at unprecedented rates. This is due to a lie that would have us think that police are hunting down young minority males for sport. Black lives matter is built on this lie. And the radicals' objection to the blue line was because it challenges the Black Lives Matter lie. Since January 1st, there have been almost 750 black-on-black -black assassinations in Chicago. But these deceitful radicals want to focus on the less than 1% of instances where a police officer engages and kills one such often armed and dangerous thug. Mike Brown in Ferguson, Missouri was a vicious thug engaged in a violent assault. This shows how these radicals sit nice and comfortably in Warwick and make lazy, ill-informed condemnations of our police. You don't get off scot-free here. It's time to confront you and shut you down. You have incited a war against our police. This kind of liberal, this kind of radical, what is that? You're talking to your neighbors. Police are getting well, killed. And and so are black people. Ever in Warwick, please, have any of you ever felt threatened by a cop? You said never. you felt that that line was offensive and that you felt threatened by that line. There's only 4.9% black people matter. in this community. We're it's coming together. Together. We're coming together. No, it has to do with that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it has to do with it that. Yeah. 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 The Warwick community, now a village divided. Tonight's board meeting erupted into shouting and anger. Warwick is 91% white, home to many in law enforcement. For now, the line stays. The controversy continues. When you're talking about an issue like Black Lives Matter, it's unfortunate that people can look at the name of it and somehow think that it's offensive when you're literally just saying that Black Lives Matter. It seems like such a basic thing that unless you're awful, there's no reason for you to feel like it isn't true. People were saying at the meeting that, you know, black on black crime, it's crime. And when the particular people they're talking about, like, do like kill other black people or whatever, they go to jail for it. I'm not a supporter of Black Lives Matter. I'm a supporter of All Lives Matter. My son is a New York City police officer. I never know when he leaves, am I ever gonna see him again? We were taught that if you were told to stop by a police officer, you stopped. In some of the instances, you know, where unfortunately people were killed, they were given a chance to comply. They didn't comply. What did you think the police were going to do? A snippet of a cell phone video of which you probably don't see the whole thing from start to finish, just the snippet, should not be the end of a police officer's career. You weren't there, you've had no training, you don't know what the police officers are up against, don't be an armchair cop. Sometimes it just feels like people are being willfully obtuse. There is still this group that doesn't necessarily get a fair shake because people were willing to forego the entire picture in order to support this idea of what the police are.
it's just been a generally pretty difficult time for a lot of people. So I think perceptions have changed and not just me, but I feel like people see each other differently. My mom is very tied to the police station. Um, they've known me since before I could probably speak. We have blue painters tape across our car supporting police. After leaving the meeting and seeing, kind of just reflecting on, on how the meeting went and how it kind of just kept running in circles and running in circles, I was like, yeah, that's not, that's, we, we can't approach it that way. The next day, that's when we decided to go about it the complete opposite way. We wanted to present a proper, more mature way of going about things as opposed to what some of the other, some of the other people were doing. More civilized. Right. The mayor, he's trying really hard to like sit down with people on both sides of this issue and figure out a way to resolve things. Unfortunately, there's like a really loud and, uh, and small group, but very hostile. There are people who support the same things they support in a very different way. And I think they will get what they want. This other group that supports the blue line, I feel like we could talk to them, give them the blue line. Then we de-escalate the situation. They were open to discussing how to get the police involved and we're working towards community policing and outreach. They're gonna have a work session about it on Monday. I'd imagine immediately the blue line will be back. We have been through quite a week. Definitely not the Warwick community that we're so famous for. There were a series of meetings where people disagreed, but then also saw the common ground. There was an understanding that it's okay to reinstate the blue line. But the question is, if there is people in our community that do have fears, that should be part of that discussion. And I think we should. I grew up in the city of Newburgh, which isn't far from Warwick. Growing up, seeing the way that the black community treated themselves, definitely made me have a huge bias when like all the Black Lives Matter stuff coming up. I'm like, oh, well, I, I got no sympathy for you. You guys are, you guys are treating yourself like animals. Look at you. And, until this came about. She was actually responsible for really opening my eyes to it. You know, she's like, I have a black family. I was raised by a black family. And the Black Lives Matter was started by three people who were saying that they weren't being heard and, you know, they felt there was injustices in the criminal justice system. Am I in the same camp as Donna Nicole? No, but I don't have to feel as strongly about the thing they're passionate about in order to work with them on it. As we move forward, we're going to continue to disagree. But we have to realize that we are all different and that conversation has to continue. There are going to be people who say that the line is coming back and that still sends a terrible message and I hope that they see that the problems that they have with the police that make them have a problem with the line, we're trying to address those. What we get out of it is so much more than stripping pain off the road. You know, we kind of wanted to make community outreach, not the people like me and him who love the police, but the people who are a little bit afraid or unsure of them. This is a program that was developed to help police and residents build relationships. It's, um, it's meant to take place in smaller so groups, so 10 to 12 people. We have the dialogue started. We have the ear of the people who are in charge of making those sorts of changes possible. And we have the attention of people who didn't even really believe it was necessary. We didn't have that before. We just had a line. As a point of information, just to just be updated, so yes. the blue line will be allowed to fade away. Then we transition to the statue. It's you, basically yeah. gonna be a three-tier thing where etched on one side is gonna be the oath, then in the middle, like an etching, the blue line from the back, hopefully. So mm -hmm. you're gonna bring the blue line to the statue? Yeah, that's, the that's our plan, yeah. To me, the blue line is a controversial issue, and it will always remain so, especially in Warwick. The blue line literally honors every fallen officer, and it's out of respect that I want that blue line there. If you choose not to visit, you don't have to see the blue line. Then the people who choose to visit and actually support our police... Don, keep in mind that when that whole crisis happened, we could have dug in 
compensate, no return to the blue line. You know, we've got some controversy around that from people I know. We've got some negative stuff from that. But you know, we didn't. And it was an act of trust. And I ask you to remember that. I think it's still far from being resolved. The deeper conversations haven't really continued in a way that they need to continue. That concerns me. There has to be more people in our community a part of that conversation, because none of us speak for the whole community. I used to think that Warwick as a whole was generally more uh, forward thinking, but I had my suspicions. At least it feels like somewhat concerns are being heard. I think we're at a crossroads right now. We're at a point where we can accelerate our forward movement, but we also could very likely slide back. To be able to grow, you have to be realistic. You have to look at what's still lacking in the community, what work still needs to be done. I think that the line will fade, and I don't think they'll paint another. And that's fine. But hopefully with that, and let's say after this whole election that's been very divisive to our country, hopefully there'll be a healing and then lines won't matter.